Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about Falco. All right, so as I mentioned in my safe stack overview video, uh, Falco is one of the three or four uh, web servers or backends that I recommend using when writing F Sharp web applications. So why am I choosing Falco? And I remember in the first video I did, I said I, said I was gonna use Giraffe. Then in another video, I said I was gonna be using Seraph just out of kind of laziness, I guess. And now I'm saying I'm gonna be using Falco. So what gives, what, what's the, uh, the decision behind that? Well, I always ignored Falco a little bit because I was so comfortable with uh, Saturn and Giraffe. So I'd be like, why the hell would I would try a new uh, framework or library? Uh, but I looked into it a little bit. Uh, I was in a Slack channel and I noticed they were talking about Falco and how uh, like the NHLPA was using Falco in production. I was like, wow, and that's, that's kind of pretty cool. And not just because of that I'm changing, but that they kind of pushed me to give another look. Maybe there's something I was missing. And overall, when I look into the documentation and stuff, I find I found there's a lot of simplicity uh, that I really liked. And, uh, you know, you can think about it as it's kind of a giraffe equivalent where uh, it's right above ASP.NET Core uh, in, in a, as a wrapper. So like Saturn has, you know, de also depends on Giraffe and it depends on ASP.NET Core. And one thing I didn't like with this new SafeSnack version is that uh, the rollout between uh, the, the newer version of the Safe template that uses a .NET 5 was a bit slower. And I feel that's not only, that's not just because of any like individual or anything, it's because there's like a lot of dependencies. And so one factor that I like is a, a library that has a very low dependencies. That's another reason why I like Sutil also, because it doesn't really depend on uh, React. So that's really cool. And Falco has a uh, very limited dependency. So it's kind of like Giraffe in that sense. And so if I compare Falco and Giraffe, I feel uh, the syntax was a lot more straightforward than Giraffe. And uh, that's kind of like what pushed me to using that instead of uh, Giraffe is basically the simplicity of it. And uh, it has some interesting takes on authentication and author authorization. But at the end of the day, it's like so similar to Giraffe and, and uh, Saturn. Like you, you really can't make a bad decision with these three frameworks. So I just decided, hey, I'll try Falco. So uh, that's what this video is going to be about. The computer section, we're just going to go uh, and uh, swap out Saturn with Falco. So I'll just show you how to do that and make a few test queries. And I also talk about how the front end, so our uh, front end that is served by Webpack, how it communicates for back end. There is a redirect, uh, a redirect kind of strategy there. So I walk through and I highlight how all that works so uh, you don't get confused when you're developing on your own end. So. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Make sure uh, leave a like really helps me out on the video and comment if you have any questions or anything like that or just any comment really helps the algorithm out. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so welcome back. Um, the only thing we're gonna do in this video is just going to swap out uh, Giraffe or Falco. I explained earlier in the video why I want to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the server folder and open up a PowerShell window here. And with using, if we're using packet, we're just going to do .NET add uh, Falco or .NET packet add Falco. And what this will do is it will add uh, Falco to the dependencies. And since I'm in the folder, this is like a new feature of uh, packet. Uh, since I'm in the server folder, it's also going to add it to the packet.references here. So we can actually check that out. If we opened up the packet.references, uh, you can see we have Falco added, so that's good. Oh, actually, uh, I should probably capitalize that. So it seems um, it added Falco, the, the real like dependency, uh, but we should probably add a capital letter just, just in case. I didn't realize that I, I made a mistake. So if we look at our source tree, what happened? So we added Falco to the packet uh, dot dependencies and we added it. Uh, so it regenerated the lock file and uh, you can see something happened here that we don't necessarily want. So Sutil was updated. 
Um, and we don't want that for now because I believe there's breaking changes to that. So we can do a short, um, a short side quest here to change that. And it was added to the server packet of references. So let's just hard code the version of Sutil to be um, one sec to be 0 0.1.3 alpha, I believe was the version. And if this works, um, so I'm just going to go back to the root. And when I'm at the root, I'm gonna do .NET packet install, which will uh, grab the dependencies file and update the packet.log file. It won't, it should not update uh, the dependencies. And um, I don't know actually why it updated the dependencies when I added a new package, because normally if you do install, it should not update the um, the version numbers. It should only update, uh, or it should only add uh, new dependencies. So if we look, go back to the source tree, uh, if you look at the log file, we can see that now Sutil is not here. So that means we did not change the Sutil version. So I'm pretty happy with that. Everything should compile again, still. And so, okay, cool. So now we added Falco as a dependency. Uh, we need to update the source code because uh, we're not gonna be using uh, Falco for now, but we're gonna change that. So we're gonna open up the solution. And in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the Falco, Falco documentation and uh, I'm going to do Falco. And I'm going to um, just grab this. So this is just a hello world. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm going to remove whatever uh, was there with Saturn. I don't know if I said earlier I was using draft. I'm using Saturn by default. That's what comes with the um, safe stack. So let's go ahead and open up the server file. All right, so what we have for now, this is from the safe stack template. So we have to do stuff, which we're not going to need. So I'm just gonna remove this for now. And um, I'm going to keep this commented out because we're going to talk about um, Fable remoting in the next episode. And so, um, yeah, so this one we're gonna also comment out and we don't need this router. Well, th this part we don't need at all. This is the part we're going to remove because this app is a Saturn app. And so we don't need that. What we need is whatever we copied uh, from Falco. So I'm going to open up these statements here. Uh, we should not need Saturn. Why does it want Saturn? Uh, okay, good. And then, whoop. and so good. So here we have a web host here. And then if we check out, um, this, oh, so this is everything that we need. So this will include the running of the web host, I guess. So that's cool. I, I'm new to Falco, so I don't know much. Uh, but one thing that was there beforehand and that we don't have now is um, we used to have, so I don't want this. I don't want this um, call because on 8080 what I want is like if, if there's nothing after the URL I actually want to serve the page well it won't actually so actually that's fine because I don't know if uh, we should talk you probably talk about this so I'll do a short side quest let's go to the safe stack documentation here so, okay so this is what happens in development so basically we have this process that is the front end and we have this process that's the oh sorry it's the opposite so this process is the front end and this uh, process the back end. And so we, when we go to localhost 8080, what happens is we have a Webpack dev server. So basically when we do .NET run, uh, we call Webpack, or we call Fable and Fable calls Webpack. And then Webpack has a development server. And uh, yeah, so when we go to localhost 8080, it goes to the Webpack dev server. And there is an API redirect that redirects API calls. So if we do uh, localhost 8080 slash API, anything that will go to that will be routed to the localhost 8085. So that's why before, uh, if I do control Z, that's why before there was an 8085 here on in our backend, right? So that's how it's communicated. And I'll show you 
where the redirect is actually uh, where the redirect is actually defined. It is in the uh, webpack config. So here, anything so proxy dev server. So anything that is a slash API slash whatever will be uh, routed to local host and either 8085 or if you define a, a, survey, a server proxy port. So that's why calls get rerouted. So here, this endpoint is actually local host uh, two point slash. So actually, if I wanted, I really wanted to here, I had to do this for the local host. Well, actually, what I, what I meant to say is um, any call that is not slash API will not hit my backend, right? So that's that's basically the, the core premise. So that's why I want slash API here just to test it out. And so, whoop. okay, so if I go to PowerShell and I'm on Stockwatch, I'm going to do .NET run. Oh, like I said, we forgot to specify the uh, 8085 port. So that's why it's saying five five thousand. So this is not going to work. I'm just going to check the documentation on how to change the. Uh, well, what was it in Saturn? That'll oh, actually help us a little bit. URL eighty eighty five. So let's see if there's a URL thingy here. No, I'll check the documentation in that case. All right. So I'm on the. Uh, Falco repository and I'm in some sample. So I'm in the configure host sample because what we're going to need to do is uh, change the uh, web host configuration. So in Saturn, uh, there's like some helper methods there. And in uh, Falco, what I'm seeing is uh, there's only two helper methods that they expose. So that, that uh, endpoints is exposed. So that's pretty simple. For anything else, uh, you go by the default uh, kind of way of doing it, like in draft. So that's that. If I copy everything here, uh, and I'll subtract stuff from it. Um, but if I do this, and so basically I need some types here. Uh, cool. So I'm going to need this configure services to add Falco. Uh, that's one thing we need and um, one other thing we need so we don't need the configure logging so this is ASP and ASP.NET core stuff um, basically a web host is kind of the uh, the web host builder is the builder to configure all your surfaces and all the configuration for a web server and um, yeah, that's like basically the simplest I can explain it. And so it's basically a builder pattern which has configure methods. And we pass the things we need to change from the default configuration to this web host builder. And then once we're done with the web host builder, we can do configure. So if we do configure, we can pass configure host here. This should compile. But the thing we actually want, so this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, um, this is fine. What we want, what we actually copied all this stuff for is we want to uh, do app use, we want to do a, a use call here. So if we do dot use, uh, we should probably do somewhere here, use URLs. Okay, uh, so after just a bit of research, uh, basically to use URLs like we did in Saturn, uh, we can just do here dot use URLs and we can define. Uh, so this takes a, a string array, but we can do uh, just simply, yeah, we can just simply put this in an array and we can do so it's HTTP or slash 0, 0, 0, 0.085. So that's exactly what we had in the past. And just to confirm that, we can just control Z just a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly what we had in the previous um, template. So we can control Y to the future. Boom. All right, so if I run this, um, so it now basically, it, it was basically watching my code 
And now that it compiles, it regenerated, it's now listening on 8085. So if I go to uh, my browser and I go localhost 8080, I should have what we had before. Um, and if I go here and I do slash API, it does not work. <laughs> um, so one sec, slash get test. Started, uh, okay. Maybe we need to uh, refresh this, but. Uh, whoa. All right, so it didn't work at the root. Oh, because the redirect was slash something. So um, if we go back to the uh, web pack here. It's slash something here, and we didn't have a slash, so basically if we uh, try it again, just to confirm, that's why it didn't work. If we go here and we remove um, the uh, thingy here, remove the test, and we add the, the next uh, forward slash, what this is gonna do is it's gonna interpret it very differently. Um, so let's try that for now. Uh, did I save? If I saved, did it rebuild? Um, it seems like it rebuild. Let's just remove here and put a slash. So that seems to work. If I just add a one here, just to confirm it works. Perfect. Uh, just so you can see. So I added a one there. All right, cool. So now we have a backend working uh, with Falco. So that's pretty cool. In the next video, we'll be looking at Fable remoting because we're not actually going to be using these kinds of endpoints. We're going to be using uh, these kinds of remoting APIs. And so uh, I'll explain what that is and why we're using it in the next video. So I'll send it out to the outro. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Leaving a like really helps out the video and the channel. Uh, we're almost at a thousand subs or surpassed depending on when you see the video. I really appreciate the support. Uh, thank you so much for that. And if you or a team are looking for a little bit of help with your F-Sharp projects, I do uh, freelance software development and consulting, so you can check out my website down below if you want to contact me. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in that next video. Peace!